All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to build this portfolio website in Notion. So one of the best ways to stand out as a data analyst is to make your work public and put it in a portfolio. So today we're gonna to build one, one that is very lightweight and flexible, completely free and doesn't require any code and that you can make updates to whenever you need to. We'll walk through every element of the portfolio step by step so that by the end of the video, you'll have a fully functional, ready to show off portfolio that you can add your own projects into. So one aspect of this video will be best practice practices concerning data portfolios, but another aspect will be actually designing the portfolio itself so that you have something to walk away with. This video is not sponsored by Notion. It's actually sponsored by UserCentrics. More on them later. I just think Notion makes website design very lightweight and easy, and I'm a big fan. All right, so enough chit chat. Let's start building. All right, so here we have a blank Notion page, and we're just going to start working top to bottom. So first, uh, let's go ahead and add a nice cover. Uh, you can put whatever you want. You'll see that it gives you uh, some default options here, and these are pretty nice. Um, I just have this um, monochrome Notion style banner that I actually bought off of Gumroad, just looked it up randomly, but I think it looks kind of cool. So uh, I definitely recommend having some sort of a banner up, whether it's just your name and your title or just some fun image, just, I don't know, something to make it a little spicy. Now we're gonna put uh, our name, so I'll put Matt Mike data analyst portfolio easy enough. We'll put a line break underneath that. And now the next thing we're going to insert is a, a little bio and an image of me. So what we're going to want to do to achieve that is two columns. And we're going to end up stretching out these columns. So at first, let's go ahead and throw in the image of me that I want to use use this one here and you're just going to grab this line this horizontal line on the side it's kind of hard to see and you're just going to kind of drag it into space here okay it looks kind of big right now try to make this even with it that's pretty good and then i'm going to end up putting my bio right here so at the top here this is going to be a heading style one so heading one hi i'm matt and then uh, the actual bio will just be text to save time i'm just going to copy paste something i previously wrote but essentially what I've done here is I've just mentioned I'm a data analyst, specialty in Power BI, the background in education administration and business operations. I'm a former dean of students who made his way into the corporate world, eventually into data, where I got my start as a business analyst. So just talking a little bit about myself, giving a very brief, but kind of intriguing and detailed background. And then what I'm currently doing, I'm currently a product manager and Power BI instructor and kind of an Excel instructor with Maven Analytics, where I oversee our live learning cohorts. And then the next thing we want to put underneath the bio, a huge fan of doing this is a view resume button. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put view resume and we're going to make that, let's make that heading style two. So if I double click it, I can uh, change it into something here, do heading style two. And what I've done is I've taken my resume and put it into a Google drive that I can then link to this. Okay. So we're going to take a PDF resume. We're going to throw it into Google Drive. We're going to click share and make it public. So anyone with a link can view it. We're going to copy that link. And then what you could do with this view resume button, you could double click it. And if you click this little link button, you can add a link. We can add the link to our Google Drive uh, resume so that if we click it, it pulls up our resume, which is pretty sweet. So that way, anyone viewing the portfolio can easily look at our resume if they would like to. Underneath our resume, we want to link to things like socials. So we're going to take a similar approach. We're going to do LinkedIn, separate these with uh, pipes, YouTube. In my case, I have YouTube, but you can put whatever you want, Tableau Public, GitHub, whatever you want. Uh, just your socials that you feel are worth sharing on this page and email as well. So first I'm going to take my LinkedIn link, double click that, add a link, throw it in there. We're going to do the same for YouTube, grab that link, throw it in there. So then for email, what we're going to do, so we'll double click, add link and you're going to proceed your email with mail to and then a colon and you can type your email so that way when you click this uh, it'll actually pull up the user's email browser window to create a new email and send it to you a nifty little thing there we're going to highlight this and we're going to make it heading three so prominent in big text but a little bit smaller than resume and i want this to be uh, a little bit more even i don't like this white space here so i'm going to drag this over and make the image a little smaller 
So now we're gonna move down here and we're gonna add a technical and professional skills section. So I'm a fan of putting both technical and professional skills so that you're showing a combination of tech skills and soft skills. But before we do, let's talk about something that most people skip and that's data privacy. So even small personal websites can collect personal data. So maybe you're embedding a YouTube video or you are um, adding some kind of analytics platform or have a contact form at the bottom, all things I've done, and then boom, you're collecting people's personal info. So that's where today's sponsor comes in, User Centrics. So they have a tool called User Centrics Cookie Bot. And this tool makes sure that your site stays privacy compliant under laws like GDPR and CCPA. It's super simple. You just drop in their script and the cookie bot handles consent management automatically. It shows users the right banner and makes sure you're only collecting information after they've given permission. And the best part is it's completely free with small websites like ours. So whether you're building a personal portfolio or something bigger, User Centrics gives you peace of mind that you're respecting privacy and potential legal headaches. Thanks again to User Centrics for sponsoring this video. So from here on out, I want uh, most of the page to be centered. Notion left aligns uh, text and you can't really get it perfectly centered unless we get a little bit hacky. So to achieve that, we're actually going to create three columns here and we're gonna leave the outer ones blank and we're gonna put our text in the middle. I'm gonna copy and paste this to save time. Um, but essentially we're doing a heading one style text here, technical and professional skills. And we're just gonna stretch out the sides so that we can get it all as one line and try to get it as centered as we can. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, oh, well, actually it does not look pretty good. So we wanna stretch that out a little bit, pull it over. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is getting it as centered as I can with the title up here. I think that looks pretty passable. Okay, so we have our header. Now we're gonna add in some fun images just to give visuals of the tech stack that we have. So for this, uh, we're actually gonna create five columns. And we're just gonna start throwing in our images. This part's a little bit tedious. We're gonna do forward slash image. And I already have some images uh, saved and ready to go here. I have Excel. I'm just gonna repeat the same process, the same for SQL. And we're gonna resize these in a second, but first I just wanna get the images in there. Okay, so we got our images in there, uh, but they're they're not even yet. So we're just gonna kind of play with the sizing. So see how I'm kind of shrinking the SQL image a little bit. Pull each of these to the side and shrink them a bit. And that's also gonna help kind of center these icons. Okay, and I'd say that is pretty decent. I'm just gonna make this one a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have five skills there. And then underneath, we're gonna add a couple more. Again, sizing is like really tricky with Notion. For this one, I'm not gonna have it perfectly centered. I'm just gonna kind of have it like a, a, another row left aligned. So I'm still gonna add uh, five columns. Uh, Cause if I make it four, the icons end up being bigger than the ones above them. So again, it's not like, it's hard to get it perfectly centered unless you have like five more skills. So it's five and five, but we're doing five columns, but we're only, only gonna add two more skills. So image, I'm gonna add Python. Uh, so we have our technical skills represented and the next is professional skills. So I'm not gonna add another header, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add some space and I'm just gonna kind of list out a few in two separate columns. So I'm gonna do two columns. It's gonna be normal style text. Uh, if you wanna add an emoji to proceed, I wanna do like a star. You click the colon and you start typing and it'll pull up some emojis. So I want to have this star. The skill I'm gonna put here is data visualization, add a space. All I did was bold the actual skill, added a pipe, and then how many years I've essentially been performing that skill. So four years. And then I'm just gonna kind of repeat that process for three more skills here. So business analytics, six years. So if you just click enter, it's gonna try to just pull you underneath the column you're in. So instead you kind of have to like click a row underneath where you're at so that it's not a part of that column. But I'm gonna add just a line break there to create some separation. And with that, we're done with our skills section. The next thing we're gonna add is a featured project section. So this is kind of the main piece of the portfolio uh, and a bulk of what people are gonna see, but it's really not too complicated to set it up. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new page for each uh, portfolio item, but we're gonna have kind of like a preview view of each. So we're gonna, for the header, we're gonna take a similar approach as what we did up here. And I'm just gonna copy paste this into the middle column and same thing, just kind of stretch it out. And the goal here is to just get it centered with the header above it. And I forgot to, Change the title, Featured Projects. Now we're gonna try to center it. That looks pretty good, okay. 
And the approach we're gonna take here is we're gonna have uh, like a project description on the left side and a project image on the right side. So description, image, two separate columns. So two columns again. And uh, for the project title, we're gonna use heading three. Okay, so I copy pasted the text, but this text here is heading two, and then the rest is just normal text. But what I've done is I've put the title of the project, the skills used underneath, separating with a pipe, and then just a one sentence description uh, to preview the project. And then in the second column, I'm gonna add an image. Okay, and there we go. So we got the project image. And then right here underneath the description, we'll put project summary. And this is gonna be a page uh, that is gonna contain a uh, overall project, a more in-depth project summary. So let's turn this into a page. We're gonna click into that page and I'll demo kind of what I mean here by like a full description. So when a user is visiting the page, they will be able to click this project summary link and it will take them to a page within your website where they can view the full project summary. So I'm going to add the same image here so that people can see it a little bit bigger. And underneath that, I'm just gonna add my project summary text. So I'm gonna copy and paste it. I'm gonna walk through kind of what I've done here. This is a pretty simple one, but um, again, kind of like a one sentence description of it, what the conclusions of my analysis were and the steps I took to complete it. Definitely recommend uh, kind of walking through your creation of the project, showing the visuals if you can. We're gonna do a few more example projects where you'll see that. This is pretty decent for a project summary page. Uh, of course, more text would be better, but this is how we can set it up. So we're gonna go back to the main page here and our first project is done. So now we're gonna click underneath here because again, if we click right underneath, it's gonna pull us into the columns. So we're gonna kind of go one line under and we're gonna add a line break. And from here on out, we can basically copy paste what we've done. So you see, I just dragged across, copied it and just pasted it here. And from here on out, I'm just replacing the text and images. So this one, I'm gonna start replacing the text, project planner. And my description, I'm gonna replace the image. So I just clicked uh, the three buttons here in the corner for more actions, replace, upload file. There's my image, boom. And then same thing, project summary. But we're gonna turn this into a page and we're gonna add info into that page. So. Okay, go back here. Now we have two projects complete. And there's two more projects we're gonna add. We'll copy and paste this entire thing again. And I'm just gonna kind of walk through what this is. So uh, I'd say this is a better example of a summary. Uh, so I talked about, again, what it is. This report answers the following business questions. So I'm kind of setting it up. Took the following actions to create the report. I talk about the SQL script a little bit. Uh, I show the Power BI model. I mentioned that there's 12 individual reports created to track the revenue. There's an overview tab, service tab. And uh, I included a little note here that I was ordered to include nine visuals per page, which is not something I'd normally do, but I had to do it. Nonetheless, the, this is what each service tab has. I show how the slicers are linked, some of the DAX code, and the super calendar that I created, as long as, as well as just a little conclusion at the bottom. So a bit more robust of a project summary. That's probably a little bit more along the lines of what you would want to do for yours. Okay, so we're going to back up here to the main page. We have three out of our four projects created. We're going to add our little line break, and we're going to add one more. Here we go. We are done with all of our projects. And in general, I recommend having around three to five projects. Uh, you can certainly have less than three if they're very robust and show a wide array of skills. But three to five is usually a pretty good baseline for showing like a good sample of your work across different tools. When you start getting beyond five, it starts to be too many. Uh, when you think about someone visiting your portfolio, pretty unlikely they're gonna like sit and look through seven or eight or nine projects. So three to five is kind of a sweet spot. In this case, I have four, so we're right in the middle there. But I'd say in general, that's what you should aim for. And then of course, as you create new and better projects, I would just replace some of the older projects with those new and better projects so that you're 
your skill level could always be up to date in your portfolio. Okay, back here, we're gonna add a line break. And next we're gonna add a professional certifications section. So, so quick note on this, I'm not talking about like um, course completion certifications. Those are nice to add to like your LinkedIn, but not super valuable for a resume or portfolio. What I'm talking about here are exam-based proprietary certifications. So the ones I'm gonna add here, like the Microsoft PL300 for Power BI, as well as the Tableau Desktop Specialist uh, certification. So these were certifications I got from Tableau, from Microsoft, I had to take an exam to earn and I paid money to take that exam. So these are a bit more noteworthy, typically more recognized by recruiters and employers alike, uh, much more valuable than just a certificate of completion. So let's go ahead and add our section. Similar approach as above, three columns. And I'm gonna copy and paste my text up here, change this to professional certifications. And for this one, I'm going to take a two column approach of having a badge on the left side and the name of the certification on the right side. So two columns. This one will be an image. We're going to do the PL 300 first. So I'm going to add that batch. And then here, I'm going to copy paste my text. And the type of text here is this is a heading two. And the bottom is just a normal text. So the name of the cert and then when it was issued. Uh, for the second one, I'm going to add the Tableau badge that I have. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it underneath for this, add my Tableau badge, shrink that down again, and copy paste my text and my Tableau badge. So you can see each of my badges uh, looks pretty nice on this portfolio page. Last thing we're going to do is just add a tiny little thanks section at the bottom. So uh, again, we want this to be centered. So I'm going to add a space. We're going to do three columns. And we just want this to say, thanks. And then underneath it, and uh, there's a nifty little trick you can do with a block equation in Notion to change up the style of the text. So not gonna get super into the weeds of like the nuances of the block equation, but we basically want this to be centered and italicized. So we're gonna forward slash block equation, and we're gonna enter this text. So backward slash begin curly bracket aligned close curly bracket and then uh, thanks for taking the time to visit my portfolio and each word has to be separated with uh, the little like curly ribbon uh, symbol for an actual space to populate in the text uh, once you have your text entered separated by the curly ribbons we're gonna do another backward slash end curly brackets open aligned close curly brackets done and we have this nice little centered cursive uh, text saying thanks for taking the time to visit my portfolio. And so with that, the portfolio is essentially done. But now if we really want to make this website next level, we can actually turn it into a real website. And the way we do that is very easy. We go to the top here, share, we're going to click the publish button and we're simply going to click publish to web. And just like that, it's created and we can grab the link and share it wherever we want. And that's it. So hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed kind of going through this little tutorial with me on how to build uh, an awesome portfolio website in Notion. Would love if you could take the time to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it helps a lot. And be sure to check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it. See you next time.